In this video, I wanna take you through the process of how you, the music artist, can go and produce your own merch. In particular, I'm talking about merch that you ship to yourself and order, and then you ship out to customers one by one or bring to shows. And this is different from print on demand, which is done one by one, where there's no risk involved because you don't pay until a purchase is done. I have a different video on that you can check out. And the, the pros of ordering merch in bulk is that the profit margins are significantly higher. Downside is you're shipping it out and you're incurring the risk. So there's a lot of factors to this and I'm a mechanical engineer by, by trade and by degree. And so um, I, I go through this process at work for years. So to me, this process was simple, but I realized that a lot of music artists, it's incredibly complicated. So first, what are my qualifications with doing this for merch aside from the whole mechanical engineering manufacturing background? Well, I have a bunch of merch, so I'm gonna walk you through that now. By the way, I know a lot of you love when I show spreadsheets in videos, so later on, we're gonna go through this crazy spreadsheet that's gonna help us figure out the cost and profit margins and, and all that jazz. We'll go through that in a sec. So let's go through the merch. So I have cheap circular stickers and I have cheap rectangular stickers that I pretty much just throw in every order. These are designed to be as cheap as possible. I also have fancy stickers. So I have a die cut clear sticker for sticking on water bottles. I have a die cut regular vinyl sticker for sticking on water bottles. I have a holographic die cut sticker that I'm gonna show on screen here. I have a die cut regular vinyl sticker here, and then I'll put another one above it because I'm waiting on those to come in. So I don't have them yet. I have custom guitar picks. I have custom guitar pick keychains. I have wristbands in two different colors. I have two different CDs with two different package types and two different manufacturers. I have cassette tapes, by the way, cassette tapes, very risky because you have to order a lot and they take a lot and they're very hard to sell. I have these uh, acrylic pins that I got for dirt cheap. They were like a, on super sale for just 10 of them. So I got these. However, I also have soft enamel pins that I'm waiting for now. It takes another three or four weeks. Show them on screen there. I have button pins, which are these things, uh, different album covers put in button pins. I also, this is the last couple things I swear, I have what I'm calling promo cards. These aren't something that I would sell. These are little things I drop in every order that's basically selling people on the idea of joining my Patreon. There's even a QR code on there that if they scan it, it'll take them to my Patreon so they can check it out and consider joining. And then the last thing I'll show here is custom paper. Every single order I send out, I personally hand write a note thanking the person for their support and I sign it as well and throw it in the envelope. Now I have a lot of crap to clean off my desk. So as you can see, I've done this a lot and I've learned a lot along the way. So now I wanna give you kind of like a 10,000 foot overview, of the general process of going and producing your merch. So what I think when we dive through this, this step by step, it'll help you see the bigger picture while we're going through it. And by the way, I completely forgot to mention, I also have custom shirts. I'm not wearing them right now because that would be too convenient. <laughs> but um, I, that's another merch item that I have as well. So. The general picture here, the first thing I think you wanna start with is thinking of a product idea. I think that's a lot easier to start with than going and designing stuff because your design's gonna depend on the product. So do you wanna sell whatever thing? You wanna research the vendors, learn about the manufacturing process and product options. And three, you wanna come up with your design, figure out how much it costs various quantities. Four, think of how you might be able to sell that, how much you can afford, do all the math. Five, order your products and submit the design. Wait for the proofs. Proofs, six, and then seven, get your product. So let's go through that step by step. So the first step was think of a type of product that you wanna sell. I think this is the best way to start because you'll, you'll learn about what the manufacturing limitations are. You can look up other artist designs, think of what designs you might be able to do for that specific type of product, figure out how much it's selling for, which will also help you figure out other stuff down the line. So let's say, for example, you wanted to make custom pins. This is what I went through recently. I didn't know the difference between uh, this thing and this thing and all the other types of pins that are out there in the market. So the first thing I did is I just went to Google, typed in custom pins. <laughs> and the f of course, there's a bunch of different companies that'll go and make us custom pins. So I just started clicking on stuff. This one's an ad. And basically this takes us to step two, right? This whole research phase. And here you're just trying to learn like, what are the options? What, what are the different types of products inside of this general product? So as you can see, custom soft enamel pin. So this is when I learned what a soft enamel pin was. And I learned that, okay, there's these sizes. You get to pick how big it's gonna be. You can also pick different attachment points. And then you see the quantities here. So if you buy 25 of them, they're gonna be 850 each, which is super high. But if you go to 50, it's half the price. If you go to 100, it's half again. So the price difference from 25 to 11 to go up to 100 
it's 280. So that also tells you a lot, a lot here. <laughs> but focusing on the options, like I, I saw the soft enamel pins, and I'm like, okay, what's what's a soft enamel pin? <laughs> so when I went to another website, and I looked at like what do they say, and they have all these different types of pins, and they explain the pin processes. Stamp soft enamel, century hard enamel, die struck, century soft enamel, printed pins, and die cast. And so what I did is I googled each of these separately, soft enamel versus hard enamel. I watched some videos of people showing how they actually manufacture these products. Because if you can understand how these things are made, one, you'll appreciate how much they cost. And you can also learn a little bit why you might want to choose a certain option. So I researched the different types of pins. I researched the different type of backings, and that's when I decided that helped me figure out that, okay, I want to do either a soft enamel or a hard enamel pin. That's the type of pin that companies like Disney sell in, when you go into the park. They might also have the, the die stamped or whatever, I forget what it was called, but um, did some research. Those two, I ended up going with soft enamel pins, and so that's how I figured that out. Now, at this point, it's just a matter of figuring out the sizes. So I just kind of looked up some standard pins online. I just researched various bands pins. I think I looked up San Holo pins. And then uh, I found that on his store, he has this pin. And then I kept looking up people and I saw that people are generally selling pins for one inch or one and a quarter inch size. So that led me to go buy, I think I, think I got one inch pins. I kind of forget though. Um, I also learned along this process that you're very limited by colors when you do this type of pin. You can't have more than like three, four, or five colors in your design. This is why you want to think of the product idea before you make your design, because each specific type of product is going to have its own limitations on what it, what it can do. If you needed a complete infinite color design, you can't use any, and you can't use enamel pins. You'd have to do with the, the to direct to printing, whatever type, or similarly, you could do something like these acrylic vinyl pins. So that's why it's important to research this ahead of time. So at this stage, you can actually come up with your design. And this is where the sponsor of this video comes in, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. Invest in yourself and your personal growth. Have a specific skill you're trying to learn, like graphic design to make your t-shirts? Skillshare is the perfect place to start. From photography, illustration, graphic design, hint hint, freelancing, and more, you can find classes that'll match your goals and interests. So Skillshare has a ton of graphic design courses, and you don't know what graphic design is. Basically, we think if you need a logo for your shirt, if you need artwork for your album art or thumbnails for your videos, graphic design is, is the art of making those graphics and designing them. And there's various softwares you'd use for that, from Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, those are the two ones that I use. Um, and there is there is just an absolute insane number of courses here. But if you're looking to do T-shirts, you probably want to learn Illustrator. So this is an awesome course, um, seven hours of content, Adobe Illustrator CC Essentials Training by Daniel Scott. So if you want to up your graphic design game to really get into designing and stuff, making awesome designs to sell to your fans, and Skillshare really has you cover it on that front. So something really cool, the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description and the pinned comment below, or use the code Andrew Southworth, we'll get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Anyways, back to the video. So at this point, we know that we want the soft enamel pin, and I figured out that I wanted a butterfly military clutch background. I think so. It's called a butterfly back, either way. And I knew that I, I wanted to limit it to like three colors just to be on the safe side to not incur any extra fees. And at, at this point, you can start figuring out the details of your specific design. So you, you're going to want to go to a few different companies that make pins. This is just another one. None of these are our affiliates or anything like that. I won't even, won't even link to a lot of them because you can just look them up yourself. So go to enamel pins and you're gonna wanna do a free quote or click quick order. And there's hard enamel, we want soft enamel. Uh, the size, I figured out I wanted to do an inch. And I also figured out that I wanted to do, I think, I forget what I actually did. I think I did some type of silver, but let's just say I wanted to do black metal. Um, I didn't want to do an epoxy dome. I had to research that as well. <laughs> Uh, four colors or less, so I didn't incur a fee. No glitter, because I hate glitter. One butter butterfly military clutch. Poly bagging, that's just a resaleable cheap bag. I didn't want to pay anything extra. Um, I didn't want to do a paper stock card, although I'm thinking about making my own through um, just a separate company. And then here we get to the quantity. So if I pick 100, and now we see another thing that you learn when you go to manufacture stuff, is that some of these companies will charge you less if you're willing to wait longer for your product. So if you're willing to wait 30 working days, which 
30 business days, which is, which is a long time. Shipped by sea, probably from, I think, China, because I, I, I didn't use these. Actually, I did use a, a real sister company of this company, and it was shipped from China. Um, cheapest 30% discount. So you get a 30% discount if you're willing to wait like six regular weeks. Um, and so I'll just pick that in this case, US dollars. And now we get a price. So for 100 pins, $150, it's $1.50 a pin, right? So now we have an idea. We, we can quote this across different companies, research them, and find what the price points are. You already have your design, so you know all the details of it. And that's where we can, you know, shop them out and then start making a spreadsheet. So this is where things get a little fun. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Um, this is my spreadsheet that I made because I wanted to have a good idea of how much every little item that I put in a bag is costing me, how much I potentially could make from a selection of products, or how much money I'm losing for giving away certain products or items. So over here, I have the specific item, the manufacturer, so that I can easily look them up in my email and find the, the history of communication with them. I have the total cost to order the entire batch. So to order 200 CDs, I ordered two separate 100 batches of two different CDs. It was $283, so that means it cost $1.42 per CD. You can sell a CD for 10 bucks. That means you're making $8.58 per CD. That's a profit margin of 7X or 705%. If I sold all 200, I would make $1,700 profit. Did I do the math right? Yeah, profit times quantity will be sell all profit. And then I have arrived because these, this new batch of CDs I'm still waiting for. So I put the date that I should get them, then I put a link to the tracking whenever it ships out so I can have everything nice and handy. Green means that I already have it in-house. Um, I think, do I already have uh, these things? Button pins and the pin from Sticker Mule. I do have these, so those are now green, and I'll delete the date. So that's how I worked this whole spreadsheet, and this is how, what you want to think of. And if you don't have a piece of information in this, you need to figure out what to put in. So obviously, when you go to order something, like I'll scroll down to soft enamel pins, I went through a company called Pinmart. And so it was $260 for 100, but they had a, I went with them because they had a faster turnaround than the, the other company that I just showed you. Although I might use the other company at some point in the future because that's, that's super cheap. That means it's gonna cost $2.60 per. Now at this point, this is the sell for amount. This is where you're gonna have to do some research. So this is where I went over and I'm typing Sun Holo Pins. And you might want to do this for several artists to figure out what's normal in your industry or in your genre or whatever. 9.99 euros, which is basically 10 bucks. So you figure, and that's pretty normal. I've seen pins sell for 20 bucks uh, from Disney. Obviously Disney's a kind of a fancy brand, <laughs> but um, you know, $10 seems to be standard. So that means there's $7.40 profit. That's just, the difference between the sell for and the cost per. And then there is the profit margin, which is just the uh, sell for price divided by the cost per. I'm quite double, I'm questioning my math now that I'm having to explain it. And then the sell out profit. So this is like how much, or I guess this isn't, yeah, this is how much money I would profit additionally over my initial investment. So in total, I would, you know, make, make $740 profit. So you want to be able to figure this out because this is going to make you realize if this is a viable idea or not. If you go through the process of this and you think you can only sell an item for 10 bucks, but to get 100 of them, it's going to cost like 1,000 bucks. Well, you're not going to make anything. You're, you're going to be losing money, right? You're, you're going to break even, right? So it's good to know this ahead of time because you need to, you have to have it make sense. You don't want to be in a situation where you have to sell 100% of an item to make your money back or profit. Like ideally, you'd be able to sell maybe half of the items and then you're already in the green. So think about that when you're going through this. And then additionally below here, this was just me doing extra calculations for bundles. Like I knew I wanted to sell this thing called the Best Friends Pack, which is just a selection of things put together at a discount. So if you want to do that, you can essentially just add up the individual items how much you want to sell it for, figure out the profit margin, the profit and the profit margin um, to make sure that you know your margins and you're going to make money. So at this point, if everything's good with the money side, everything makes sense, you could go and actually submit your order 
And at this point, what typically happens is a company is going to send you what's called a proof. A proof is the vendor getting your artwork that you sent to them and basically like looking at it themselves and sending you back a copy saying, hey, this is the closest digital version we can show you of how your end product will come out. So it's just them double checking to make sure that you're happy with the artwork so that you don't you know, come back later and say, this isn't what I wanted. It's, it's their way of protecting themselves as a manufacturer and saying, this is what you want, right? This thing here, this is exactly what we're gonna make. Double check this before we proceed. So usually when you submit your artwork and do the payment, within 24 to 48 hours, the company, in almost every case I've done, will get back to you with the proof. At that point, you have to confirm or deny. Usually if you confirm it, it's just they go forward and go make it. There's no going back. You can't to be like, hold on. Oh my God, I messed up in a lot of cases. If you say no, you, you would also want to send in, I messed up, can we do this instead? That didn't come out the way I was thinking and then they'll send you another proof. Some companies will charge money for additional proofs. So I think Atomic Disc, the company that makes these CDs for me, I think they give you three rounds of proofs. So they'll basically submit your art, give you a proof. If you mistake, they give you another proof. If you mistake, they'll give you another proof. If you need more than that, um, you really need to be more careful and they'll charge like a $10 fee per proof after that. So some companies will be infinite within reason, I'm sure. Um, and then at that point, it's just a matter of waiting. Whatever shipping time the company told you, you know, some items like uh, stickers, these ship in like two to four days in most cases. Now, I do have some stickers that I ordered from a Chinese company that <laughs> have taken a long time, um, which makes sense, right? Because it's shipping literally across the globe. So keep that in mind that you, if you make products in the United States, it's typically more expensive, but you get them quick. If you make products in foreign or far away countries, it's gonna be cheaper um, in, well, in most cases, but you're gonna be waiting a long, long time. And if it's important to you to get a product in time, that might shift your strategy when it comes to the money thing. So if you wanna learn more about the how and why of how you can go and make CDs, check out this video right here. And if you wanna learn more about print on demand, which is kind of a different strategy and kind of supplements the stuff or can replace the stuff, check out this video down here to learn more about that. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.